Today we are going to talk about recommendation engines. Let's start off with explaining what a recommendation engine or system actually is. Um, it basically is just a kind of techniques used to provide item suggestions to an user. These recommendations can contribute to any kind of decision making. For example, what product a user can buy, what song to listen to next, which movie to watch. And these kind of systems are popular in sites like Amazon.com, YouTube, Netflix, TripAdvisor. You've probably seen this thing in pretty much every e-commerce site you visited for example is something that says other users who viewed this item also viewed uh, another item and that's pretty much all there is to recommendation systems and let's go over how these recommendations are actually generated so in order to recommend something, a recommendation engine must predict that an item is worth recommending. And one naive way of doing so is to just recommend the most popular item on the grounds that it has been liked by the highest number of users, making it the most probable to be liked by any random user. However, that is not a really interesting way of recommending since the recommendations will be the same for every user. So instead we'll turn our attention to another kind of technique or algorithm called collaborative filtering or CF for short, uh, which allows us to generate recommendations more customized to each specific user. And the fundamentals of uh, collaborative filtering are quite simple, even though it's pretty powerful on its own. You don't need any information about the items themselves to recommend them. The only thing you need is the historical data of what users have thought about these items in the past. And collaborative filtering is based on the assumption that people who agreed in the past will agree in the future and that they will like similar kinds of items as they liked in the past. So let's take a basic example here. Say we have person A and B both persons bought a hammer and a sickle in your online store, which in your case means they have a more similar purchase history than normal. Because of that, you assume that their preferences are similar. When person B buys some red cloth, you make the conclusion that since person A has bought similar items to person B in the past, they are also more likely to buy red cloth if person B did it. And based on these assumptions, we can take the step of recommending the product red cloth to person A. This is an example of user-based collaborative filtering. We find users with similar preferences to our uh, you person we want to generate recommendations to. And then we check what products these people who are similar bought in the past. And our user is yet to have bought or seen in the store. Next up, however, we will take a, a look at something slightly different and as I mentioned, this was a case of user-based collaborative filtering. There are, however, two kinds, user-based and item-based. And user-based is when you choose items for a user, 
because those items have been liked by similar items. Item-based is when you choose items for a user because this user has liked similar items in the past. So what we did before was to find user similar to our user. Item-based, however, is when we are looking at the items that our person has bought and try to find items that are similar to it. And the reason we are taking a look, look at item-based CF is because it's actually quite a bit better uh, because the user-based uh, instance of the um, method tends to perform poorly in terms of time complexity and also recommendation quality. The item-based collaborative filtering actually tends to create better recommendations. When you compare two users to each, each other, you determine their similarity based on how they feel about items. When you compare two items to each other, you determine their similarity based on how users feel about them. And this can be described as items existing as vectors in a space where each user is a dimension uh, and we are trying to find the similarity between these two vectors. As you can see here, hold on, oh, where, where each item is a row in a matrix and each row consists of uh, columns where each user in our data set has uh, created a rating. So for example, Hammer has been liked by all users in our store. Uh, Sickle is not rated by uh, all persons yet and the same goes for Red Cloth. And the same goes when we are comparing users between each other. As you can see here, uh, we, we can now transpose the matrix. So a person row consists of uh, that person's ratings on a item. And the thing is that in reality, you have more users than items. This means that an item vector of users ratings is most often greater than a user's users vector of item ratings, which would have been the case in user-based uh, CF. This means that there, there is more data at hand for calculating item similarity than user similarity, which may positively impact the accuracy. And the thing is that users are also human. This means their tastes and preferences change over time, which means that a user that was similar two years ago may have completely changed uh, tastes and that leads to uh, bad recommendations. Items on the other hand stay the same most often. A hammer is always a hammer and its similarity to a wrench will always remain the same. This means that you can compute an item similarity matrix less often than a user similarity matrix. Okay, so in the previous uh, slides, we have talked a lot about things being similar, both items and users, but how do you quantify similarity? There are actually a number of ways. So the first one is the most simple and easy to comprehend. It's cosine-based similarity. It's also known as vector-based similarity, where you view two items and their weightings as vectors and define the similarity between them as the angle between these two vectors. And um, we are going, we're going to go over how to compute these uh, similarity metrics 
in code in Python uh, in a later video. So stay tuned uh, if you don't uh, comprehend these um, um, mathematical notations. That's fine. We, if you are familiar with Python, you will see how to compute them. And next in line is adjusted cosine. And this is basically the same as cosine similarity. The difference being that we are taking into account the fact that users have different standards for how to rate an item. So you, for example, may be really strict in how you rate an item. Uh, you only give a product a five out of five if it's really amazing. Whereas uh, someone else may give a product a 5 out of 5 if they just felt like it uh, lived up to their expect expectations. And uh, to do this, uh, to take this into account, we subtract each user's mean rating from all of their ratings, which means we kind of center the ratings uh, based off of uh, each user's standard for giving a rating. And the next is a Jacquard similarity. And it's quite different since when doing item-based collaborative filtering and using Jacquard similarity, you don't calculate it based on user ratings on an item, but whether or not a user has weighted an item. So it's kind of this binary thing where a, a user has either seen it or not, bought it or not, weighted it or not. And you calculate it by counting the number of users that are, you could describe it as uh, associated to both items. So you count the number of users that have either given a rating to, seen a product, or bought a product. These all things can be considered kind of like a rating from a user. And then you count the total number of users that have rated each item. Then you divide this number of shared users by the total number of users. And after that you multiply the number you found by a hundred. Next up is mean squared uh, deviation. And this is basically where you take each item, subtract them from each other to get difference, and then you square this difference, and uh, then you just take the mean of it. And as I said before, we are going to implement all of these uh, calculations in uh, Python. So uh, go ahead and watch that video if you haven't done this, this before. And after that, we are going to implement a basic item-based collaborative filter in Python. Uh, and this will be, that will be as much from scratch as possible. And when we are finished with that, we are going to try out a library in Python made specifically for uh, recommendation engines and uh, computing or uh, generating user recommendations. So this uh, has been a short theoretical introduction to recommender systems and collaborative filtering and similarity metrics. And I'm sure some of this stuff has gone over, over your head and that's okay. Just keep going to, uh, over the next videos I'm going to make and hopefully things will get more clear as time goes on. So I'll see you the next time.